Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can we start the uh, next session? Uh, the next session will be uh, about the new direct acting antiviral uh, agent in management of chronic hepatitis uh, C virus. And we are uh, delighted in the uh, Saudi Association of the uh, Saudi Association for the Study of Liver Disease and Liver Transplantation to have two uh, eminent uh, hepatologists uh, who will be uh, speaking about uh, new direct, uh, new direct act acting antiviral uh, drugs. Uh, the first uh, speaker is uh, Professor Massimo Colombo. He is uh, a professor of the clinical hepatology and he is the chairman of the Department of Liver, Kidney, Lung, Bone, Marrow Units and Organ Transplantation. He is currently the head division of gastroenterology and hepatology University of Milan. Uh, he is a well-known figure in uh, hepatology uh, and he is uh, uh, contributing uh, significant, uh, significantly to a lot of the uh, society worldwide uh, and uh, we are delighted to have him uh, uh, with us today. Uh, Professor Massimo, uh, you can start. This invitation gave me a unique opportunity to share this talk with you and to visit this beautiful country, my first time actually. These are my financial disclosures. I was asked to discuss about uh, the residual application of interferon-based therapy in genotype 1 and 4. I must admit that in Italy they came of age and this is a kind of archival history of medicine for me, but it was nice to go through this uh, uh, issue and to discuss with you what, uh, what, what is still the potential of these uh, age uh, regimens. Uh, as you know, the epidemic of hepatitis C is stratified among uh, at least uh, six uh, major genotypes worldwide, and this is the, actually the results of factors that have to do with uh, human behavior, economics uh, in terms of immigration, and uh, uh, genetic uh, factors. Uh, genotype still holds importance in terms of uh, duration of therapy, need of adjuvant regimens to be added to uh, uh, oral DAAs, and this is in fact uh, the reason why still there are some complex algorithms in the use of these oral regimens. Uh, more than 80 million persons are chronically infected by genotype 1, and I understand that the Arabic Peninsula is not a highly prevalent area for this, whereas it is for the genotype 4, which comes fourth in the ranking of the major genotypes in, in, in the world. What we learn from interferon-based, what we learn from interferon-based studies was that uh, virus sterilization, clearance of virus, uh, results in a, 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 important clinical benefits, uh, up to 80% reduction in all cause mortality, reduction in the risk of liver sick cancer, and need uh, for liver transplantation. This was not only the case for non-infected patients, but it happens also for HIV co-infected patients. Most uh, interestingly, these studies were cohort-based studies, so they meant, they, they, it, it meaning that they were based, uh, that they were focusing on very highly selected uh, patients' population, those who were fit or able to tolerate interferon and ribavirin. But the general message coming, stemming from this study is that uh, this uh, uh, strategy of uh, uh, curing hepatitis C should be uh, as broad as possible because there are convincing data that what really matters in uh, uh, d d d diminishing the risk of mortality among a general population is to treat as many patients as possible. And this is the reason why the European Association for the Study of the Liver release recommendations to adopt all oral interferon-free regimen to broaden the scenario of hepatitis C therapy in order to achieve a diminution in liver-related mortality among the general population. And these involve not only mono-infected and HIV-infected population, but those with and without cirrhosis with compensated and decompensate uh, uh, chronic uh, liver disease. Of course, because of the constraints, the main link to the economic reasons, uh, these uh, all oral regimens 
are hard to be delivered in uh, worldwide, and there are in fact a majority of the uh, regions in the world that do not have still access to interferon-free regimens, and therefore they can uh, still be using interferon-based regimens. What we learned in the past using interferon is this. If you read this paper written by Professor Marcelin and Associates and published in the pathology three years ago, this is a real life study, so-called prophecies, run in many countries, more than 160 centers worldwide, demonstrating the important differences in the clinical outcome in patients treated with interferon ribavirin, we are talking about PEG2A, PEG2B plus riba and patients according to the infecting genotype. And the old uh, conceptions that the genotype 4 were better in terms of response to peg riba therapy than genotype 1 was to some uh, extent challenged by this study. And now we realize that the response highly depend upon genetic factors, i.e. 28B, disease severity, and the presence of comorbidity. But all in all, you see genotype 1 and 4 were poor responders to conventional peg riba therapy. A step forward was the introduction of first generation PI, telaprevir and bosseprevir, linear inhibitors of polymerase, of, of, of a protease, NS3, uh, uh, 4A uh, protease of hepatitis C virus, and now it with a number of adverse events linked to the interaction of these molecules with the human proteins and resulting in a high rate of anemia, skin reaction, and a and the, the concrete risk of developing infections associated with neutropenia. This is a real-life study that was with Telabrid plus peg that was conducted in Europe, South America, and Russia, uh, telling us what we already knew from peg studies, and that uh, mainly that uh, patients with cirrhosis and those who were new responders to previous therapy were the poorest responders. So even the addition of telaprevir did not improve that much the outcome of therapy in those populations who are most in need of uh, therapy and uh, need uh, to have the virus clear, cirrhotics and those who fail pegriba therapy. And this uh, usually came at the expenses of a number of adverse events that increased in terms of rates uh, with age. If you look at the last column, those aged more than 65, up to 45% of the patients got uh, uh, symptoms related to grade 3, 4 anemia as a consequence of this combo therapy, and up to 11% uh, or 12% of them experienced a severe serious adverse event, including infection, risk of death, and in fact, seven people died during this uh, real-life observational study. And of course, uh, this came at at the expenses of the increased cost, because to correct for anemia, you need often to use EPO, when, until it became clear that you could also manage anemia by down-dosing uh, ribavirin, safely down-dosing ribavirin with, without compromising the rates of SVR, and of course, uh, at the expenses of a number of blood transfusions, up to 10%. So it was a burden in terms of pills, it was a burden in terms of adverse event, it was a burden in terms of economic cost, and it was to some extent disappointing because it was not, was not improving the outcome of those patients with advanced liver disease. And this was also true for the competitor Boseprevir with an additional uh, negative factor of a need of more pills. Here, you need to take 12 pills of Boseprevir plus Riba. It was really a nightmare. But the Boseprevir regimen was to some extent superior to Telaprevir in terms of management because it was uh, associated with the response-guided uh, regimen that allowed to stratify patients into good and poor responders so you could actually spare uh, untowards the effects in those populations who were well likely to poor respond to therapy, namely those who uh, failed to, uh, to drop in terms of viremia in the very first weeks of therapy, namely at week eight, those patients not falling down less than 1,000 international units of RNA were those very much unlikely to have a sustained virological response upon continuation of therapy. And again, 
with this linear inhibitor of virus uh, protease, new responders were again a difficult to treat population and among the new responder and the treatment experienced patient, those with F4, metavir F4 means cirrhosis, were those less likely to achieve a sustained virological response. The scenario was even more worrisome, moving towards patients with more severe liver impairment. This was the lesson coming from France, the CUPIC study. The French had the, privi have the privilege of introducing the newly developed regimens to treat any disease as long as they are proved to be safe and effective in a phase three trial. And they were among the first to, 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 to treat their patients with advanced liver disease with the laparvirbociparib, but the message stemming from these studies is circled in red there. If you are treating patients with a really impaired liver, those having less than 35 gram per liter of albumin together with less than 100, thousand plates, meaning high port hypertensions, were likely to achieve a sustained virological response to telaprevir or bosepres only in 27% of the cases at the expenses of a high rate of complication, including hospitalization, infection, and death, 51.4% of the cases. So that was really discouraging because in the most in need population with hepatitis C, this uh, combo therapy really failed to provide clinical benefits and were, in the end, risky approaches. The scenario, to some extent, definitely improved with the arrival of sofosbuvir, as Professor Marsukowski taught us, and also the combination sofosbuvir with pegariba became an option. This is the neutrino trials published two years ago by Dr. Eric Lowitz, and you see here genotype one and four, excellent rate of response, but you must be careful in interpreting this data because genotype 4 was underpowered in terms of sample size. And most importantly, when this scheme of therapy was brought to real life, this is the U.S. target cohort, meaning those patients enrolled in America, target, ACV target, is a prospective observational program to treat hepatitis C based on more than 50 centers in America and four in Europe. And here you see again in the last column that patient with cirrhosis had only 70% rate of sustained virological response. So in real practice, the neutrino scheme, which means 12 weeks of sofosbuvir associated to regulated interferon plus weight-based dosing or ribavirin, one versus 1.2 grams, <laughs> resulted in an unsatisfactory rate of, uh, of uh, clinical outcomes, even though they were superior to those registered with PET riba plus uh, telaprevir or bosepravir. And when the trio cohort, this time is still practice, real practice, but data are captured from prescription, electronic prescription of the pharmacies, again, you see here important cirrhosis and prior no response to PEG riba standard stood as the uh, negative factors in the predicting an SVR to the neutrino, or if you wish, sofosbuvir peg riba uh, regimen. Last year, simeprevis became available. It's a second wave protease inhibitor with advantage of required only one single pill per day, 150 milligrams, not being linear and therefore devoid of many adverse event associated with anemia and skin reaction, but still skin photosensitivity is an issue there. Apparently uh, better tolerated and endowed it with the response guided therapy regimen as well. These are the data coming from pool, phase three data, quest one, quest two, published in Lancet by <coughs> Professor Jacobson and Professor Mans. The promise in the relapser to cover a black hole in the registration trials of, uh, of, if you wish, of the telaprevir, and the partial responder, the new response at the time trials. Again, using a combination therapy of simeprevins with pegriba. New responders st stood as a poor responders again. So this does not uh, introduce a substantial benefit with respect with the first generation 
uh, PI. And if you look at what happens in the population when they were stratified for genetic factors, interleukin 28b, or the presence of the Q80K polymorphis, which is a genetic polymorphis in the in the 1A subpopulation of genotype 1 infected patients, which predisposes patients to develop RAVs when they are exposed to a protease inhibitor, you see again that there were subpopulation of patients that got suboptimal response to therapy versus other, the non TT, those genotype A lacking. Uh, Q80K polymorphism that apparently resulted in 90% response rate to, uh, to, to Simepravil regimen. Simepravil was given following a response guided regimen, which meant uh, those patients that the week four became negative, less than 25 international unit RNA, and remained so at week 12, were those more likely to attain a sustained virological response, even if the peg riba tail was shortened to 12 weeks. So week four became a stopping rule for those not declining more than 1,000 and became an important way to run a response-guided therapy in naive patients and relapsers to get a shortened treatment modalities. As you see here, again, very satisfactory outcomes in patients with mild disease, but when it comes to cirrhosis, metavir 4, the rate of favorable outcome dropped to 70% even in those patients meeting the criteria for a response-guided treatment. So still suboptimal. And when you move from genotype 1 to genotype 4, you might read the paper written by Professor Moreno and Associates, the Journal of Hepatology last year. Again, new responders stand as a poor responder category, even though these patients are given this second wave PI inhibitor. And this is, to some extent, improved only in the treatment naive and prior relapse patients meeting the criteria for a response-guided treatment. So if you are dealing with naive patients or relapser that meet response-guided criteria, I would say 90% of patients will meet this, you can shorten the treatment, 12 weeks of triple therapy plus a tail of 12 weeks of peg riba and get a 90-95% response rate. But if you move to patients with prior new response or patients with cirrhosis, these rates of <clears throat> response are definitely unsatisfactory. So there is no question that in those geographical areas where all oral uh, regimens against hepatitis C have not been introduced as yet, you might still relay on using pegariba based regimen, possibly using sofosbuvir or simeprovir in genotype 1, I would like to remind you that sofosbuvir is a pangenotypic regimen, whereas, a genotype, uh, whereas simeprovir is uh, still labeled for genotype 1 and 4 only. Using this kind of algorithm that starts with the patient selection in terms of interferon sensitivity and eligibility, then stratify your patient's population for predictors of a response pre-treatment, like disease severity, the genotype, of course, uh, uh, taking into consideration the two possible regimens, soft and SIM, the genetic polymorphins, IL-28B plus uh, Q80K, and the basal, basal uh, viral load, which matters less with, this, with these regimens. And finally, looking at viral kinetics, developing a kind of response-guided therapy for, of course, uh, Simeprevir. You don't need it with uh, Sofosbos. Having said that, the European Association for the Liver release specific, uh, I'm finished, release specific indication. Sof plus pegariba, any hepatitis stage, naive and experienced, 12 weeks. Sim plus pegariba, any hepatitis stage, in the treatment naive, a relapse, you may go short, response guided, whereas in a partial responder and non responder, you have to go long, 12 triple plus a tail of 36. But I wish to remind you that this comes at the expenses of a burden in the affecting, which is affecting the clinical capacity of your center. This was clearly demonstrated by Professor Mazoumi years ago. 
These are the cost, this is the burden, and the reduction in the uh, capacity of the liver centers in Germany that was uh, treating their patients using, using telaprevir or bocifrary. In the end, 16% of the patients required hospitalization related to therapy due to anemia, infections, or decompensation. The number of visits have increased enormously, and the need for transfusing and the spending money for EPO was increased in, in parallel. And the last slide to tell you that the four, there is no competition whatsoever with the all oral regimen. This is the German registry that is compare the bluish columns, interferon free regimen versus interferon based regimen. And you can easily appreciate that the use of interferon free regimens allow to triple the number of patients aged over 70 to be treated and also more than double the number of patients with cirrhosis to be triplet, not to speak about those with severe complication of cirrhosis like the cubic lie, and in the end, those with the previous histories of hepatic decompensation. Thank you for your attention.